Hey guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller TV series named Search. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins at the demilitarized zone on the border between South and North Korea, where a South Korean soldier was on patrol as per usual. Suddenly, he heard the rush of hurried footsteps nearby. Searching his surroundings anxiously, he saw no one. A sense of foreboding overcame him, prompting him to flee in terror. His nearby comrade, upon hearing his terrified screams, rushed to investigate. But in the short span of time, the soldier had already died. Seeing this, the comrade was frightened and promptly raised his gun to enter a state of alert. For a fleeting moment, he saw a silhouette flash by, sending chills down his spine. Suddenly, a tremendous force knocked him to the ground. Then, a more terrifying event unfolded. The military quickly located the scene. It was confirmed that of the two patrolling soldiers, one was dead and the other missing. A blood-stained rifle was left at the scene with all its bullets intact. Deep within the secluded corners of the jungle, a pair of blood-red eyes lurked. Given the border location, this unexpected incident caught the military's urgent attention. A chemical expert, Rim, sent from the Chemical Defense Command, was dispatched to lead the investigation. She discovered fresh clues at the scene, several footprints from the North Korean police force, which could indicate that it might be done by a North Korean soldier who crossed the border. Adding to the confusion, a sample of blood collected at the scene tested positive for the rabies virus. Rim recognized the severity of the situation and pulled soldiers from nearby posts for a thorough investigation. They had to find the missing soldier. A soldier named Jin was among those drafted for this mission. His outstanding performance on regular duties had made him a key trainee in the reconnaissance team. During the day, Rim had witnessed Jin bravely fighting off a hungry wolf through a drone. He was also the only military dog trainer in the team and brought his trained dog for this search mission. When Jin saw Rim in the team, he was slightly taken aback. They had met before and it seemed like there was some unresolved tension. However, they quickly composed themselves, ready to focus on the mission. Unbeknownst to them, their search target, the missing soldier, had been abandoned in a part of the jungle. As time passed, he gradually regained consciousness, only to suffer further harm. Following the trail, Jin and Rim quickly entered the demilitarized zone. Suddenly, there was a noise in the forest ahead. Jin didn't find anything unusual after switching on his night vision goggles. They pressed on, soon finding the missing soldier's abandoned military boots, still stained with blood. Jin believed that the missing soldier must be in great danger, and they had to find him immediately. Just then, an explosion occurred not far away, likely triggered by a landmine. A figure flashed past, and the military dog began to grow restless, as if it had sensed something fishy. Consequently, the search team split into two. One group stayed to guard the area, while the other, led by Rim, followed the dog to find the person. After traveling for a while, the military dog began to dart into the depths of the bushes. Jin and Rim quickly followed, arriving at a clearing. Jin abruptly covered Rim's smelly mouth, gesturing for her to look ahead. As they were about to shoot, the figure vanished into the bushes again. The squad had no choice but to expand their search range. The military dog quickly found the body of the missing soldier. The deceased had bite marks on his neck, as if injured by a wild animal, yet there were no signs of a struggle. Otter still, his arm was covered in a rash of blisters. Rim was puzzled and decided to report back to the main team, leaving the others to wait for reinforcements at the scene. Just as she returned to the main team, an urgent situation arose. From the low bushes, the sound of countless wild animals howling could be heard. Occasionally, glowing eyes would appear in the darkness. The soldiers realized that they were surrounded by a pack of wild dogs. They fired back, but these wild dogs were far more aggressive than imagined, daring to charge through a hail of bullets. Soon, a soldier was tackled by a wild dog. Luckily, Rim shot in time to rescue him. Eventually, under heavy fire, the pack of wild dogs scattered and fled. Meanwhile, not far away, Jin's military dog seemed to sense something. Ignoring his attempts to stop it, it broke free from its leash and dashed off into the distance. Jin followed closely, but soon realized the dog had run into a minefield. After a moment of hesitation, Jin steeled himself and ventured into the deadly field. Soon after, an explosion occurred up ahead. Jin anxiously ran over to find his military dog motionless on the ground. His longtime companion had died before his eyes, and Jin couldn't help but cry out in pain. However, their mission was technically complete. The missing soldier's body was transported back to the base, and a report of the operation was sent to the commander of the Defense Army, Han. 
Unexpectedly, this seemingly ordinary attack had given the military a headache because the incident took place in the demilitarized zone, a nightmare for the commander. Back in 1997, when relations between North and South Korea were tense, a South Korean patrol team found a North Korean female officer carrying a baby on the border. The officer wanted to defect to South Korea with her child, but soon, North Korean troops arrived. The situation quickly became a standoff. Unexpectedly, a South Korean officer accidentally fired his weapon due to tension, triggering a fierce firefight between the two sides in the open field. The female officer was killed on the spot, but the child was safe. However, the soldiers on both sides suffered heavy casualties. According to the rules of engagement at the time, the South Korean officer who fired first would face severe punishment. Unexpectedly, he and another soldier conspired to kill their injured comrades to silence them, claiming that the North Korean troops fired first. As a result, the surviving South Korean soldiers were hailed as patriotic warriors defending their homeland in the media. Their status was elevated, and today one of them is the Defense Army Commander Han, who shivers at the mention of the demilitarized zone. The other, Hyuk, has entered politics and become a powerful congressman. At the Defense Command headquarters, the military medical examiner conducted an initial examination of the soldier's body. It was speculated that he died from excessive bleeding caused by an animal bite. Rim suspected that this incident might be related to rabies, as the deceased and the wild dog both had the same kind of blisters. However, the medical examiner couldn't confirm this yet and decided to wait for the test results. At the same time, Jin was facing significant trouble. The prosecutor thought the death of the military dog was due to Jin's improper operation and might charge him with negligence in equipment management. Jin scoffed at this idea, arguing that the military dog was not just equipment, but a living being. Frustrated, Jin tore up the investigation report in anger. Rim happened to pass by the interrogation room and heard the argument inside. She waited for Jin to come out, intending to comfort him using her muscles. It turned out that the two were once close lovers, but had broken up due to misunderstandings and disputes. Rim chose not to explain anything about the past and walked away. Just then, the lab doctor called her. The blood test results were out. The deceased did indeed carry the rabies virus, which had also mutated. This made Rim feel that the case was extraordinary and speculated it might be a plot by the North. Meanwhile, Jin was held in a room awaiting a military trial, insisting that he had done nothing wrong. Then, another soldier who had also violated military discipline entered the room. Jin almost got into a fight with him due to his resentment. Unexpectedly, the next day, Jin was taken to the Defense Command headquarters. Rim told him that he no longer needed to face a military trial. Commander Han had specifically requested to see him and wanted to understand the details of what happened in the demilitarized zone. They arrived at the conference room filled with high-ranking officers. All of them were watching a video taken at the site of the soldier's death in the demilitarized zone. The video recorded a mysterious shadow, and it was clear that the military dog did not trigger a landmine, but was thrown onto it while fighting the shadow. Surprisingly, Congressman Hyuk was also present. After understanding the situation, he casually left the room. Although he appeared relaxed, he was anxious and urged Commander Han to uncover the truth about the incident in the demilitarized zone, or it would always be a thorn in the sides of the military and political bigwigs. As a result, Commander Han immediately took action and decided to establish a special task force to thoroughly investigate the matter and catch the mysterious figure in the video. On the recommendation of the officers, Min was appointed as the team captain. He was the cold soldier who had been confined in the same room as Jin. Although he had committed an offense, his military loyalty was beyond question. Commander Han promised Min that if the mission was successful, his past mistakes would no longer be pursued. After sensing Min's loyalty and determination, Commander Han's anxiety finally eased. However, unexpectedly, Jin was also assigned to the special task force, but he was very resistant to this, as he could retire and return home in three weeks. When he saw that the team provided him with a new military dog, Jin was so angry he was lost for words. But as a soldier, he had to obey orders. Jin had no choice but to build a relationship with the new dog. As the mission start time was approaching, Jin, though unwilling, arrived early at the meeting point with the dog. Here, he met his new teammates, Lieutenant Lee and a sniper. Soon after, Min also rushed over to join them as the team leader. 
When Jin saw Min, he instantly felt awkward. However, Min seemed to have forgotten their previous unpleasant encounter and maintained his usual stone-faced demeanor. These teammates were the cream of the crop from their respective units, suggesting that the mission would be far from easy. With a demanding team leader on top of that, Jin was completely unsettled. Back at the Defense Command headquarters, Rim was studying the virus information given to her by the doctor. After a while, she took a break in the corridor, only to hear strange noises coming from the morgue. It was after working hours, so there shouldn't have been anyone else around. Curious, Rim decided to slowly walk into the morgue. As soon as she opened the door, the first thing she noticed was that the soldier's body was missing from the gurney. When she tried to turn on the light, she found two bloodstains next to the switch. Rim immediately felt something was amiss. Suddenly, a tremendous force struck her, knocking her sexy body down to the ground. To her surprise, the attacker was the supposedly dead soldier. His eyes were blood red, his mouth wide open as he emitted furious roars. He was on all fours, behaving like a wild beast. He pounced on her, not like a man for tongue massage, but like a wolf for its prey. Luckily, Rim dodged her skinny figure left and right, unsure if she could escape his crazed pursuit. She barely found a moment to call her ex-boyfriend Jin for help, but he couldn't answer because he was on a mission. She had no choice but to call her colleague. This time, the call finally went through, but before she could utter a word, the crazed man lunged at her again, strangling her greasy neck. Just as she was about to suffocate, her colleague finally arrived with reinforcements. The man was shot several times, but still didn't fall. In the heat of the moment, Rim took the handgun thrown by her colleague and pulled the trigger repeatedly. It wasn't until she hit the monster's nape that he fell. But even then, he was still struggling to get up. Seeing this, Rim shot him a few more times in the head. The man was finally killed. Everyone present was shocked, wondering what happened to this man who had clearly been dead for several days, lying in the morgue. Rim was baffled. The only clue was that he, like the wild dog she had encountered in the jungle, carried a mutated rabies virus. During the fight, her wrist wound had come into contact with the man's saliva. Luckily, after taking a blood sample, there were no signs of infection. Her colleagues surmised that the virus isn't transmissible from person to person, but Rim thought this was a simplistic explanation. To test her theory, she injected the wild dog's serum into a dead rat. To her surprise, the rat came back to life shortly after. Its eyes turned red, and it appeared extraordinarily agitated. This incident quickly attracted the attention of the Defense Department. Everyone gathered to discuss the cause. Medically, there was no explanation for this phenomenon, but it was certain that the nucleic acid in the infected person's body had mutated, affecting the central nervous system in the brain, resulting in this resurrection-like phenomenon. Cutting off the medulla oblongata in the brain would allow the patient to die completely. As for how contagious this virus was, it remained unknown. The director of chemical defense quickly reported the incident to the defense commander. When Commander Han saw that the report was once again related to the demilitarized zone, he couldn't help but feel a headache. After the director repeatedly assured him that he had seen it with his own eyes, Commander Han reluctantly accepted the idea of the dead coming back to life. Although it was confirmed that the virus could spread among animals, whether it could be transmitted from person to person was still uncertain. After deliberation, the officers decided to transfer Rim, who knew the most about the virus, to the Special Task Force. This would enable them to better handle any emergencies. The Special Task Force, assembled from the finest of various units, were stationed in a village at the foot of a mountain, ready to eliminate the mysterious figure appearing in the demilitarized zone. Unbeknownst to them, this enigmatic character was carrying a virus that could bring the dead back to life. At this time, the task force welcomed the team's tech guy, who was skilled in information detection and tracing, an urgently needed asset for this mission. Now, apart from Rim, all members of the special task force were present. The team Captain Min began the pre-battle deployment. The identity of the target they needed to eliminate was unknown. The only person who had encountered this figure was Jin, but his glimpse was fleeting and he was unable to provide any useful intelligence. Based on video records, Captain Min delineated the operation area, planning to start the mountain search early the next morning. They must complete the kill mission within a week. This was a command from Commander Han, and Min had given his assurance in person. However, one thing puzzled him. Commander Han had instructed him that if they found any suspicious situation in the demilitarized zone, they should bypass the command center and report directly to him. Min sensed this mission might not be simple, especially when he found a hand-drawn map at the scene where the missing soldier was killed, which was strikingly similar to a landscape in the demilitarized zone. 
he felt the mission was becoming eerily strange. As per the tradition, soldiers participating in dangerous missions must write their wills beforehand. However, the newly arrived tech guy was somewhat dismissive. He was confident in the mission, believing that as long as they set up surveillance in the woods and added drone aerial reconnaissance, the enemy would have nowhere to hide. But little did he know, the North Korean military had set up electromagnetic interference in the border area, making signal transmission very unstable and drones might not be useful. Nevertheless, the tech guy accidentally captured Jin derelicting his duty through the drone. He reported this to Captain Min, who already had a major issue with Jin and wanted to seize this opportunity to punish him. In fact, Jin had noticed that morning that his old comrades from the same post had also come here for mine clearance duty. The reunion with his old brothers naturally brought immense joy. Later, while on duty, Jin accidentally saw one of his old teammates fall while repairing a signal line. He rushed over to help, unaware that this scene was captured by the drone. Just as he was struggling to explain, Lee, the deputy team leader, stepped in at the right time to smooth things over. He claimed that it was him who ordered Jin to help the injured comrade, thereby saving Jin from punishment. Early the next morning, the special task force was ready for action. This was their first operation since the team's formation, and the aim wasn't to kill the target but to familiarize themselves with the terrain and install surveillance equipment. As the tech guy predicted, upon entering the demilitarized zone, they faced strong signal interference, making the use of drones impossible. They had to resort to installing cameras, a method with a disappointingly limited range. Once the installation was done, the team was ready to move to the next area. At this point, Jin, leading the team with his military dog, spotted a shadowy figure not too far away. It resembled their target. As Jin was about to report to Captain Min, the figure suddenly ran off. Without waiting for orders, Jin immediately pursued the mysterious person, his dog by his side. The rest of the team wanted to follow, but Captain Min, in the interest of caution, ordered everyone to hold their positions until the situation was clear. Poor Jin pursued the figure into the forest, losing sight of them and, due to signal interference, losing contact with his team. Worse still, even his compass was useless. After a long period of no news, the team began to worry. Fortunately, a shadowy figure flashed past on one of their previously installed cameras. The tech guy speculated it could be their target. Min then ordered the team to pursue the figure. However, Lee believed finding the missing Jin was the priority. Min ignored his advice, insisting that Jin could find his way back with the help of the dog and that completing the mission was more important. But things weren't as simple as Min thought. By this time, Jin was in deep trouble. He was completely lost in the woods and unknowingly crossed the Korean border. Not far away in the jungle, a group of North Korean soldiers was tracking the mysterious shadow, thinking it was a defector. Jin had first spotted these North Korean soldiers, trying his best to hide his tracks from the North Korean soldiers. Unfortunately, he was discovered and had to run for his life. Luckily, he managed to evade them, hiding behind a tree. But before he could even catch his breath, he felt blood dripping from above. Looking up, he saw a bloody animal on the tree. He knew there were more terrifying creatures in the forest. Not wanting to endanger his dog, he gestured for it to leave and join the rest of the team, thinking that escaping on his own would be easier. However, Jin was quickly surrounded by North Korean soldiers. Knowing he couldn't run, he tried to explain that he had simply lost his way. According to the rules of engagement in non-combat zones, neither side could open fire. But the leading officer ignored these rules and ordered his soldiers to shoot Jin. Just as the trembling soldier was about to pull the trigger, a powerful force dragged him up the tree. The other soldiers looked up in horror as only an arm fell down. Terrified, the North Korean soldiers began firing wildly into the trees. Seeing his chance, Jin didn't hesitate and ran for his shitty life. The intense gunfire alerted the special task force. At this point, the dog had found them by following their scent. The team knew they could find Jin by following the dog, but Captain Min remained determined to complete the mission first, ignoring the need for a rescue operation. Jin was in a very unfortunate situation. He had just managed to escape from the pursuit of North Korean soldiers, only to run into the mysterious figure. The sight of the figure's bloodthirsty eyes and mutated arm made Jin lose all will to resist. Fortunately, a round of gunfire echoed through the air. It was Rim rushing to provide backup. She had arrived at the base camp in the morning, and upon hearing the news of Jin's disappearance, she immediately armed herself and went into the mountains to search for him. She proved to be much more reliable than the rest of the team. Seeing Jin in danger, she opened fire on the mysterious figure who was a mutant. 
However, the mutant was as agile as a spider pig and managed to perfectly evade all the bullets. With its terrifying red eyes and horrific claws, it managed to move without a trace even under a full sweep of gunfire. Thankfully, it couldn't withstand the barrage of bullets and quickly retreated from the battlefield. Rim and Jin hurriedly pursued it, but to their surprise, it climbed up a tree like a monkey and disappeared from sight. While the two were still in shock, they heard a noise behind them. It was their teammates arriving. Just as Jin was about to report the situation, the mutant suddenly jumped down from the tree, instantly knocking one person to the ground. The soldiers raised their guns to shoot, but in the blink of an eye, the mutant had already disappeared. After calming down a bit, the team hurried in the direction of its disappearance. However, the group quickly lost track of the target. It had disappeared as if evaporated, leaving no trace or even any blood. Since they were in a border area, Lee suggested that everyone should abandon the search. If they continued, they were likely to encounter North Korean patrol soldiers. Captain Min had no choice but to order a retreat. On the way back, it was Jin who took the lead. He arrived at an abandoned building where there were several dead chickens at the entrance. In such a desolate place, chickens couldn't have ended up here on their own. Jin wanted to go in and investigate, but then remembered the captain's instruction not to act on his own. In the end, he decided to give up. Their first mission ended in failure, and everyone returned to camp with their heads hanging low. Rim, who joined today's operation halfway through, now had the opportunity to report the latest intelligence on the target. Surveillance footage from the chemical lab recorded the missing soldier's resurrection from death in the demilitarized zone, a seemingly unexplainable event. His condition was similar to the target's cellular mutation, suggesting that he was no longer human. Bullets had minimal impact on them. Their only vulnerability was a shot to the back of the head. However, Captain Min was hesitant to escalate the operation. Since Rim couldn't prove that the target was a monster, the team decided to treat him as a regular North Korean soldier, and their goal was to kill him. Jin had directly encountered the target and insisted on sketching the monster's appearance, leaving the captain speechless. Their only option was to remain vigilant and prepare for the upcoming second operation. Jin, having spent years caring for military dogs, offered to disinfect the wound on Rim's hand. Rim was resistant, unwilling to be treated by a veterinarian. Jin grumbled about Rim's stubborn nature, unchanged from before. Rim was annoyed and left in a huff. This was just a minor episode during the soldiers' downtime. Every member of the squad was, in fact, preoccupied with the daunting task of eliminating their target. The captain could only fall asleep with his pistol by his pillow. By now, Jin had finished the sketch of the monster, while Rim tossed and turned, haunted by the day's events. Rim rose to discuss the matter with her colleague from the Research Institute. The elusive target, with his swift movements, made it difficult to hit his only weak spot, the back of his head. However, a casual comment from an oblivious team member gave Rim an idea. Since the virus within the mutant was a variant of rabies, why not target the virus's weakness? So during the squad's second attempt, Rim proposed her plan to exploit the fact that the rabies virus has an aversion to water. Some teammates argued that considering the target's abilities, they should ask for more backup. However, Captain Min, fearing unwanted attention, chose Rim's suggestion and formulated a detailed plan. They positioned themselves near a pond, each person standing guard at their assigned spot on the shore, waiting like hunters for their prey. At the same time, a soldier was seen wandering aimlessly in the forest when he spotted a mysterious figure in the distance. Sensing danger, the soldier sprinted away, with the figure in hot pursuit weaving through the trees. It turned out that the soldier was merely bait to lure the figure into an ambush. The soldier reached the edge of a cliff, attached a rope to himself, and jumped off, leaving him dangling from the cliffside. The figure, unable to stop in time, fell into the pond below. The team members who had been waiting opened fire into the water. When the gunfire ceased, the surface was eerily calm. They strained their eyes when a figure suddenly sprang from the water and effortlessly climbed the cliff, disappearing in the blink of an eye. They were left in cold sweat. Their mission failed yet again. After this ordeal, even the normally composed Captain Min was unsettled. To complete the mission discreetly, he had no choice but to reassure the team that they were merely dealing with a skilled North Korean soldier, not a monster. However, Rim and Jin knew better. Jin firmly believed that the target was not human, but more like a hybrid creature. Rim, a research expert, insisted that they needed to capture the target before jumping to conclusions. Jin was taken aback. He had assumed that Rim had joined the mission to save him, not to study the mysterious figure. Rim gave Jin a look that said he was an idiot. This humiliated Jin, but he quickly redeemed himself. As Rim emerged from the village clinic, she found Jin surrounded by a group of young girls. 
She warned him, as a soldier, to keep his distance from civilians during the operation. But upon returning to the camp, she found herself contradicted. A local woman, seeing that Jin and Rim were friendly with her daughter, warmly invited them to an old man's birthday party in the village. Unable to resist the woman's hospitality, Jin and Rim attended the party, completely forgetting their own rule about keeping their distance from the villagers. The party was in full swing when Jin was invited on stage to sing. The song he chose was the very one he used to sing to Rim when they were in love. This stirred a bittersweet feeling in Rim, prompting her to leave the banquet hall, hormone frustrated. Outside, a few drops of fresh blood on the ground caught her attention. Confused, she noticed a larger pool of blood in the distance and followed the trail to the back of the mountain. From afar, she saw a dead animal in the woods. While puzzled, she decided not to investigate further. Soon, Jin also left the birthday party. The hostess insisted on walking them back, chatting happily with Jin all the way, completely ignoring Rim. This made Rim feel awkward and even redundant. After the hostess left, Rim sourly remarked that he had indeed conquered all the flirty women in this area. Jin teased her if she was jealous. The truth was, the couple still had a good chance of rekindling their romance and hormonity. Even Jin's old comrades could see this, subtly trying to play matchmaker, even assisting Jin. A comrade placed a cup of coffee in front of Rim, falsely claiming that Jin had asked him to give it to her. Another comrade, June, continuously advised Jin on how to win Rim back, even promising to prepare extra meals for Jin that night. However, he would have to wait until the next morning to enjoy it. That's because tonight the team was about to embark on their third hunting operation. At 10 p.m., they set up an ambush to kill the mutant as soon as he entered a designated area. The group soon entered the demilitarized zone, each finding their spot and waiting for the target's appearance. But little did they know, the mutant had already quietly arrived in the village. Back at the camp, June was preparing noodles for Jin when the village dog suddenly started barking as if something terrifying was about to happen. The other soldier didn't think much of it and quickly went to bed, while June went to check on the radio. In the process, he noticed that the camp's gate was open. Though he didn't see anything suspicious, he soon heard a noise in the hall. Upon checking, he found his comrade brutally thrown on the ground. He tried to escape but was dragged back by a massive force. June immediately realized the danger, ran to the storeroom and shakily retrieved a firearm searching for the enemy. Meanwhile, the comrade was curled up in a corner, his life hanging in the balance. June wanted to check on him, but at that moment, the mysterious figure finally appeared. He threw June to the ground and quickly came up to him, beating him mercilessly. Soon, June was covered in blood. He used all his strength to crawl to the telephone, dialed the radio, and informed the other members who were on stakeout that the target had appeared at the camp. Then there was silence. Jin and Rim sensed that something was wrong and rushed towards the camp. Whether they could arrive in time to save their comrades remained uncertain. The two were running wildly, sprinting towards the base. They had just received a message that the mutant was at the base, and their comrades inside were hanging on by a thread. Finally, the two of them made it back to the base. The soldier standing guard outside was still unclear about the situation. Without time for explanations, Jin rushed into the hall. He happened to see their comrade June being tossed from a distance. His injuries were severe, and he couldn't utter a word. Suddenly, the mutant appeared again, and with a series of jumps, he dashed out of the camp. Jin quickly took the military dog and gave it a goose chase, but the speed of the mutant was too fast. It wasn't long before Jin lost sight of him. Worried about his comrades, he hurriedly turned back to the camp. On the way, he ran into a villager, Kim, who was curious about the gunshots she had just heard. Without time for explanations, Jin greeted her and hurriedly left. However, he didn't know that just where he had stopped, the mutant had dropped a claw and a piece of military uniform which was found by Kim and her husband. When Jin returned to the camp, he found the cold body of his comrade, June. He was so choked up he couldn't speak. The extra serving of noodles that June had promised him was still uneaten. Jin felt he had to do something. He picked up a gun and walked straight towards the exit, prepared to find the mutant and avenge his comrade. But Captain Min shouted to stop him. The mutant was the common target of the team, and he would not allow anyone to act alone like Jin. Jin didn't care at this moment and started shouting at the captain. After listening, Min went straight up and punched Jin to the ground. This finally calmed him down, but the desire to kill the mutant became even stronger. 
However, it seemed that no one had a good solution. Another soldier, who was the only one present at the time of the incident, was the first to be attacked, but he passed out quickly and couldn't provide any useful clues. When handling the aftermath for the deceased, Jin saw Jun's parents crying inconsolably and felt even worse. The death of a comrade not only brought loss to the nation, but also meant that a family was shattered. He knew that sinking into depression was of no use. Avenging his comrade was the most important thing to do right now. His opportunity arrived soon. The reconnaissance soldiers saw through the village entrance surveillance that the mutant had once again infiltrated the village. The sight alarmed the captain at once. They had just lost a teammate in battle. If the local villagers were to come to harm, the consequences would be unimaginable. He rallied all the team members and initiated a thorough search centered around the village. Jin and his teammates quickly arrived at the village streets. Suddenly, they saw Kim's daughter all by herself. If she were to encounter the mutant, it would be disastrous. Therefore, Jin broke away from the team, planning to first take the little girl home. As they approached her home, the little girl casually handed an old-fashioned video camera to the soldier in front of her. Jin initially didn't think much of it. However, when he glanced at the content inside, he was shocked. The footage recorded the entire process of the conflict between North and South Korea in 1997, including the scene of Congressman Hyuk and Commander Han conspiring to cover up the truth by killing their teammates. If the records were true, it would undoubtedly be a significant bombshell in South Korean politics. By coincidence, the original owner of the old camera was Commander Han. He had secretly instructed Captain Min, who he had dispatched for this mission, to retrieve the lost camera. Unexpectedly, it had been washed into the village by the river, picked up by the little girl, and then handed over to Jin. At this time, Lee standing nearby also saw the contents of the video. However, his face did not show any shock. Instead, he calmly told Jin that it might be footage taken during a military exercise. The primary task at hand was to kill the mutant, and all other matters should be put aside. His reaction was likely because Congressman Hyuk in the video was actually his father. Jin thought this made sense, especially since he didn't know that the man in the video was Commander Han, so he didn't hand over the video camera. Soon, Rim brought good news. The research institute had cracked the virus carried by the mutant and had developed two vials of inhibitor. Once injected into the adversary's hindbrain, it would be lethal. Jin's sole focus now was to kill the mutant. He traced the footprints in the mud at the village entrance and found the path the mutant took each time he entered the village. This was possible because the mutant carried the rabies virus, sharing some behavioral traits with dogs. Jin was very familiar with dogs. He noticed that a plant called pothos, which emits a scent that dogs really dislike, had been planted all around the village's perimeter. Therefore, the mutant's path into the village was quite fixed, the water channel where no pothos was planted. Jin also tested that dogs were sensitive to high-frequency noise, which could cause them to be temporarily stunned. This had occurred during previous engagements with the mutant, so a mature plan formed in Jin's mind. They could install high-frequency noise at the entrance of the village where the mutant enters, forcing him into a large warehouse. Then they could use a high-powered noise to make him lose consciousness. At that point, it would be difficult for the target to resist capture. The team began preparations. The first thing to do was to evacuate the villagers. They couldn't allow them to come to any harm. The villagers cooperated well, all gathering temporarily in the village's air raid shelter. Then the soldiers started installing loudspeakers at various intersections. Given the distance from the demilitarized zone, they were unaffected by the signal jamming, so drones could also be used. Once everything was ready, all the group could do was wait. Fortunately, it wasn't long before a mysterious shadow appeared on the monitor. The soldiers, who had been waiting for a while, immediately turned on the loudspeakers, causing the mutant to stagger and appear exceptionally pained. This tactic was evidently working, which greatly reassured the team. Using the footage from cameras and drones at every intersection the mutant reached, a loudspeaker would emit noise, hurting him step by step towards the warehouse. While all the soldiers were fully engaged in their tasks, Lee seemed relaxed. Previously, when they had been surveying the warehouse, he had feigned a fall, pretending to injure his leg. Therefore, the captain had not assigned him any combat duties, instead having him stay at the base. Suddenly, he stood up. His previously limping legs had returned to normal. He walked swiftly to Jin's bedside, took out the old-fashioned video camera, then stepped outside and smashed it, shattering the camera containing damning evidence against the congressman. 
The plan to hunt the mutant was initially going smoothly. However, when he passed the last intersection, something unexpected happened. The loudspeaker there suddenly malfunctioned. The mutant did not proceed along the predetermined route, but coincidentally ended up in front of the tech guy. With a single slap, he knocked him unconscious. Just as the mutant was about to deliver a killing blow, the villager Kim happened to pass by to flex her skinny body. The two of them just stared at each other. It turned out Kim had always been skeptical of the story about wild dogs attacking the village. Therefore, she had kept a close eye on every move of the special task team. She knew that it wouldn't take such a large-scale operation to deal with a pack of wild dogs. Plus, there had been several casualties in the village, and according to eyewitnesses, the perpetrator was dressed in military clothing and looked similar to a human. She firmly believed that the soldiers were dealing with something far more complex than wild dogs. Kim was a former Special Forces soldier herself and wouldn't just sit and wait for death. A few days earlier, she had organized villagers to dig traps in areas where livestock gathered. This time, when the military asked villagers to take shelter in the air raid bunker, she was wary. On the way back to fetch her daughter's toys, she happened to see the soldiers on high alert. She knew this was no small matter. Driven by curiosity, she wanted to find out the truth. But to her surprise, she now ended up encountering the mutant face to face. However, she didn't panic. She picked up a rifle from the ground and started firing frantically, though this didn't seem very effective. Luckily, Jin emerged in time, firing several shots to attract the mutant's attention and finally lure him into the warehouse. The plan was finally back on track. After locking the warehouse doors, the long-awaiting rim quickly activated the high-powered loudspeaker, causing the mutant to immediately writhe in agony on the ground. Jin was also busy, shooting furiously at the monster. However, at a critical moment, the loudspeaker suddenly stopped working due to overload. The mutant seized the opportunity to crawl behind a wooden box, gaining a chance to catch his breath. The tables had turned, and it was now Jin's turn to face misfortune. When it came to close combat, the mutant was incredibly formidable. Both Jin and Rim, working together, were powerless against him. Soon, Rim was cornered by the monster and in imminent danger. At the critical moment, Jin's spirit surged. He leaped from a conveyor belt, stabbing his dagger deep into the neck of the monster. Unexpectedly, his vitality was incredibly tenacious. The mutant still had the strength to counterattack, gripping Jin's neck so tightly that he couldn't move. Fortunately, Rim quickly took out a prepared suppressant, forcefully jabbed it into the mutant's neck. At last, this formidable opponent fell. Soon after, other squad members arrived at the scene. They looked at the mutant on the ground, speechless for a long time. Lee heard the news of the man's capture over the radio. He immediately reported the situation to his congressman, Father Hyuk, also mentioning the destroyed video camera. Hearing this, Hyuk signed a relief. After the special task team completed its mission to kill the virus-infected individual, everyone looked spirited. They could now return to their positions with honor. The villagers also happily left the shelter, but joy for some meant worry for others. When Jin returned to his dormitory, he found the camera that had been in his bedside drawer was missing. He asked Lee if he had seen it. The camera had indeed been taken by Lee, but he would not admit it now. To celebrate their mission's completion, the comrade prepared a sumptuous meal. After everyone enjoyed their meal, Rim had to rush back to study the body of the mutant, which meant it was time for Jin and Rim to part ways. Both cared for each other, but neither was willing to express it first. As soon as Rim returned to the research institute, she threw himself into her work. Soon, she made a new discovery. The mutant and the missing soldier, who had turned into a living corpse after death, both had bite marks from wild dogs on their bodies. This suggested that the virus in their bodies came from the previously killed wild dog. However, there were no wounds on the dog's body. The only possibility was another host, who had caused the rabies virus in the dog's body to mutate through blood or saliva. At this moment, the special task squad was packing up, ready to withdraw at any moment. Suddenly, they received a message. Congressman Hyuk was coming to inspect the demilitarized zone. However, Captain Min was not in the camp. He was in the zone, using a detector to search for something important. Just recently, Min received crucial intelligence. During a conflict in the demilitarized zone in 1997, a North Korean officer with a mysterious item was preparing to defect to South Korea. Unexpectedly, both the officer and the item vanished mid-journey. The nature of this mysterious item remained an enigma. All that was known was that it was a type of radioactive strategic material. 
Coincidentally, Rim had recently reported that the mutant carried some radioactive substance. This made Min connect the two events, wondering if this mysterious substance was still in the demilitarized zone. At this moment, the detector indeed detected a strong radiation response. Min followed the signal, gradually making his way to an abandoned building. Just as he was preparing to delve deeper, he received a text message from a teammate, saying that Congressman Huk was about to arrive for an inspection. Min had to abort his mission and return, which put him in a bad mood. The first thing he did upon return was to reveal that Lee was indeed the biological son of the Congressman Hyuk. This surprised everyone, especially Jin. He instantly understood that it was very likely that Lee had stolen the camera. He quickly confronted him, and unexpectedly Lee admitted it straightforwardly. His father, Hyuk, was about to run for office, and if the video content were exposed, it would negatively impact him. After hearing this, Jin was filled with righteous indignation. He criticized Lee for not deserving to be a soldier and scoffed at his father's actions. When the congressman came to inspect the camp, Jin showed no regard for his esteemed status. Even during the handshake, he didn't look at him. However, Captain Min's behavior was completely the opposite. He even tried to curry favor with the congressman, stating that once he found the radioactive material in the demilitarized zone, he would present it to him as a bargaining chip for his presidential campaign. He even expressed that his direct superior, Commander Han, was not worth his following. So the next day, Captain Min woke up early, planning to go into the mountains again to search for the material. He didn't even plan to attend the dissolution ceremony of his team. In the end, Lee, the deputy captain of the team, had to preside over it. After the ceremony, the squad members packed their belongings, ready to return to their respective positions. Unexpectedly, the broadcast came on, announcing that the village's little girl was missing and asked everyone to help search for her. Soon after, her mother Kim hurriedly came over, requesting the team's assistance. It turned out that just recently, the little girl was attracted by a squirrel on her way to school and had run into the demilitarized zone alone. This was captured by the border surveillance camera. Upon hearing this, Lee quickly mobilized the team to gear up again, preparing to go into the mountains to search for the girl. Meanwhile, Rim was still pondering over the virus host. She recalled the infected individuals they had previously killed, their eyes all red. However, during their first operation in the demilitarized zone, the shadowy figure they saw had distinctly green eyes. This implied that there was another target in the demilitarized zone, potentially a more formidable host. She hurriedly shared her suspicion with Jin, who had also seen the mutant with green eyes. He reported this matter to the deputy captain immediately. As a result, their mission into the mountains was not only to rescue the little girl, but also to confirm the existence of this other target. Hearing all this, Kim grew increasingly worried and insisted on entering the demilitarized zone with the team. Jin backed her up, stating that her knowledge of the mountain region would be beneficial. Rim once again took the inhibitor, preparing to return to the demilitarized zone. The team quickly entered the mountainous region to begin their search. This time, the military dog finally came in handy. Following the scent of the missing little girl's toy, they tracked their way to an abandoned building. At the entrance, the dog seemed to sense something terrifying inside. Scared the dog shit out of it, the dog refused to move. Jin had no choice but to leave it at the entrance while the rest of the team filed into the building. Inside, it was pitch dark with only a few rays of light penetrating through the broken walls. As they were cautiously advancing, a figure suddenly appeared before them. It was Captain Min who had gone out alone. Their meeting was awkward, but Lee took the initiative to report their mission. Min didn't say much but let everyone follow Lee's orders. Due to the limited space inside the building, Lee decided to go deeper with Jin while the others stayed outside on guard. They examined each room but found no suspicious signs. As they approached the last room, a shadow flashed by the moment they opened the door, leaving the missing girl standing alone in the room. Thankfully, she was unharmed and muttered about an uncle who lived there and had saved her, but had suddenly disappeared. Jin was somewhat puzzled, but the priority was to ensure her safety. Upon hearing the news, the rest of the team quickly arrived at the entrance of the building. By then, Rim had also arrived from the research institute, carrying two tubes of the inhibitor to deal with the mutant. Jin couldn't stop thinking about the black shadow. From what the little girl had said, the person liked to greet others with a fist bump, which intrigued Jin even more. He decided to let Lee take the little girl out first, while he went back in to investigate. But when Captain Min found out, he worried that Jin might discover something else and rushed into the building with a few team members. From a distance, they saw Jin disappear into a door. Inside a dark room, Jin heard a rustle from a corner. By the light of his flashlight, he saw a white-haired soldier. 
As he was taken aback, something fell from above. The white-haired man pushed Jin out of the way, saving him from being hit. Jin felt that this man was different from the previous mysterious figure they had killed and seemed to have no ill will. After the little girl reunited with her mother, she recounted her experience. When she was about to step on a landmine after getting lost in the woods, it was the white-haired man who saved her. At that point, Jin wanted to try communicating with him, so he used a fist bump to show that he meant no harm. To his surprise, the man responded. Just as he was about to reach out, Captain Min and the others suddenly arrived. Startled by the gunfire, the white-haired man ran away at an astonishing speed. The tech guy who was guarding the back door couldn't dodge in time and was knocked down. By the time his teammates came to his aid, the white-haired man had disappeared with his stinky hair. The tech guy's injuries were more serious than expected, with a fractured spine that required two months of rest. Because of the sudden appearance of the white-haired man, the team had to stay until the truth was uncovered. At this point, the captain had made significant progress in helping the congressman locate the radioactive materials. With a detector, they were almost certain it was hidden in an abandoned building. Hyuk was thrilled with this news. Moreover, he had just received the International Peace Award, which would add another feather to his cap in his presidential campaign. However, Hyuk suddenly received some bad news. Commander Han was about to hold a press conference to announce some important news. Over the years, he had been feeling guilty for hiding the truth about the shooting of his teammate in 1997. With the truth about to surface, Commander Han decided to confess to the media, hoping to ease his conscience. But no one expected Hyuk to suddenly appear. After seeing the commander's notes, he guessed what he was about to do. He ordered his men to murder Han, his comrade of many years. The crime scene was flawlessly manipulated to make all investigations point to Han's suicide due to overwhelming stress. Before Hyuk could bask in his victory, news suddenly broadcasted the true story of the 1997 North-South Korea conflict. This angered him to the point of becoming ferocious. He was extremely puzzled, wondering if the camera was destroyed. How could the footage still be broadcasted? It turns out that all of this was the handiwork of his son. When the camera was destroyed, Lee secretly kept the tape. He originally wanted to persuade his father to withdraw from the presidential race as a form of atonement for his past wrongdoings. But after learning about the camera's destruction, his father would renege on his promise. Seeing his father's true face, Lee decided to send the tape to the media. Jin also saw the exposed video on his computer. The clearer image allowed him to notice more details. One of the Korean officers in the picture was holding a photo of Jin and his mother. It turns out that the victimized officer was Jin's father. This revelation sent Jin into great shock. He could not accept this reality and was unsure of how to respond next. After discovering from the video that his biological father was a Korean soldier killed by his teammates, Jin glared angrily at Lee, the son of his father's killer. He was preparing to attack when he was held back by his teammates. In the end, he had to force himself to calm down. Lee felt that he was no longer qualified to participate in combat missions and applied to Captain Min to leave the special squad. Jin called his mother, telling her that his father's death had been faked by Hyuk to look like a defection from South Korea to North Korea. Because of that, his mother had to raise her son alone while bearing the stigma of being a traitor's family. The pain she endured over the years was unimaginable. Jin, feeling a mix of resentment and defiance, encouraged her to step forward. Heeding Jin's advice, his mother finally came forward to the media to share her experiences after the 1997 incident. When she first heard that her husband was killed for treason, she did not believe Hyuk's one-sided account. She wanted to confront him, but Hyuk avoided her. She was certain there was more to the story. Jin was not one to swallow his anger. He used Lee's phone to call Congressman Hyuk, vowing not to let him off easily. Hyuk was taken aback after hearing this. He never imagined that Jin was the offspring of his teammate from the 1997 incident. This led him to consider dealing with him quickly. Although Hyuk was not convicted due to the exposure of the 1997 incident video, his reputation took a huge hit. He was now desperate to obtain the radioactive materials that appeared in the demilitarized zone to regain his popularity. So this time, Hyuk decided to lead the special squad himself. Under the leadership of Captain Min, they once again arrived at the abandoned building. Their mission was ostensibly to deal with a virus host, but Min had his own ulterior motives. He wanted to help the congressman find radioactive material to secure a brighter future. Using a detector, he located the area with the strongest signal, but there was no discovery in the surroundings. He deduced that the building might have more than one level, so he ordered his team members to spread out and search a wider area. 
Rim made a new discovery during her search. She found a nameplate remaining on a skeleton. This man turned out to be a North Korean soldier who was planning to surrender to South Korea with the radioactive material. Rim was curious about what had happened in this building. Jin felt the same. He had a familiar feeling about the virus host, especially the fist-bumping gesture, which was what he often did with his father when he was young. Jin and Rim installed lighting equipment and went deeper into the building. They soon reached the innermost part of the building. Jin found a box there, but he didn't inspect it. Instead, he was attracted by a photo nearby, a picture of him and his mother. The photo had always been carried by his father. How could it appear here? Just then, the virus host suddenly walked out of the darkness. Jin looked at the man with a face full of questions and even ignored the captain's radio call for assembly. Seeing that she couldn't stop him, Rim had to leave first. On the way, she found several spots of fresh blood. Following the trail, she unexpectedly found an injured North Korean soldier. He had been searching for defectors in the vicinity, but because of a dispute with his teammates, he had been stabbed in the abdomen. He had just managed to escape here. After Rim bandaged his wounds, she learned about a past incident from 1997. That year, a young couple carrying materials used by North Korea for nuclear testing defected to South Korea. The man ended up as a pile of bones in this abandoned building, while the woman died tragically in a border conflict. The experimental materials they carried were lost, so North Korea kept sending people to search, wanting to retrieve the experimental materials. It turned out the virus carrier who was killed earlier was one of the searchers. At this time, Jin suspected that the man in front of him was actually his deceased father. Holding the photo, he asked if the man remembered the people in it. But before he could respond, a message came over the radio that the team was under attack. Seeing this, the virus host immediately left. Jin had no choice but to rush back to provide support. At the entrance, the team was in fierce combat with a team of North Korean soldiers. The opposition was the team that the previous casualty belonged to. Not long after, these North Korean soldiers were shot from behind and killed. It turned out that the men in black arranged by Hyuk had arrived. The special team members, unaware of who they were, kept their guns on them. But Captain Min knew that he had previously disclosed their location to these men. So he immediately took a hard stance, asking Jin and Rim to lower their guns, falsely claiming that these people were reinforcements. The men in black were dominant and started setting up explosives as if no one else was there. Now only Rim knew best that these men in black, the North Korean soldiers and even Captain Min, were all actually searching for the nuclear testing materials. Min led the men in black to the room where Jin had been earlier. He immediately opened the box to check, but it was empty. A man in black reported the result to Congressman Hyuk, who became impatient and ordered Min and the men in black to first kill the special team members and then search for the experimental materials. Receiving the order, the men in black loaded their guns and prepared to ambush Jin and others. Just then, the special team members received a radio message. It was from the villager Kim. She said that anyone dressed in black or with tattoos could be considered an enemy. It turned out that Kim had gone to the camp to find Jin earlier. But she didn't find him, and instead overheard Hyuk talking with his men about their plan to eliminate the special team. The observant Kim even noticed the tattoos on the men in black and deduced that they were not regular soldiers. So after they left, she immediately contacted Jin via the radio. Thankfully, Kim's timely message arrived, preventing them from being caught off guard. Immediately, a fierce firefight broke out between the two sides, using cover for protection. The sniper was shot and injured. Jin and Rim dragged him into a room to hide temporarily. Once the injured was settled, Jin and Rim took advantage of the men in black, searching for the experimental materials and stepped out of the room again, deciding to split up to eliminate the enemy. At this moment, Min realized that the men in black harbored hostility towards him, so he teamed up with Jin, who was hiding on the other side of the wall, successfully luring several of them into an ambush. Jin seized the opportunity to detonate the explosives, leaving the men under the wall dead. Once the smoke cleared, Jin found Min, who was also badly wounded. Despite his injuries, Min insisted on searching for the experimental materials, but died reluctantly due to the severity of his injuries. After dealing with the situation, Jin hastily went to regroup with Rim. After a laborious search, he found that she had been captured by the men in black. For Rim's safety, Jin had no choice but to surrender his weapon. Just then, Hyuk appeared with a few of the black-clad men. Seeing Jin, Hyuk was pleased, teasing Jin for being as stubborn as his father. Apparently, years ago, it was Jin's father who insisted on reporting Hyuk's crimes to the authorities and was shot dead for it. To stage a scene of defection, Hyuk put him on a boat and let it drift towards North Korea along the river. 
Hearing this, Rim pieced together the truth. The patriotic North Korean soldier who was planning to defect to South Korea happened to find Jin's dying father by the river and brought him to this abandoned building. After learning of his wife's death from Jin's father, the North Korean soldier went into a mad frenzy, causing the floor to collapse. He died on the spot, and the nuclear test materials were shattered. Jin's father, who was still alive, was exposed to the nuclear test materials by accident and mutated into the current virus host. Later, he unintentionally infected a wild dog, which in turn bit and infected the mysterious man and the missing soldier, leading to their mutations. Now the truth behind all the events had been revealed, but it was uncertain whether it could be disclosed to the public. At this point, Hyuk had ordered his men to shoot Jin and Rim. Right then, Lee rushed in and pointed his gun at Hyuk, threatening him to order his men to drop their weapons. This led to a heated argument between the father and son. At the critical moment, the virus host appeared. He moved super fast like a Tesla bike, knocking down all the black-clad men with a few punches and kicks. Hyuk was about to shoot at the host, but Jin immediately blocked him. Surprisingly, Lee stepped forward and took the bullet for everyone. Seeing his son lying on the ground, barely alive, Hyuk was stunned. He then went into a mad frenzy, continuously shooting at the people in front of him. But Jin reacted quickly and pulled Rim's sexy body away from the bullets, while the virus host immediately pushed him to the ground. When the dust settled, Jin walked forward, struggling to call out his father. Childhood memories became clear once again. Jin was afraid of dogs as a child, and it was his father who patiently taught him how to interact with dogs. At this moment, his father also approached, his loving gaze saying everything. Jin wanted his father to come home with him, but his father turned his back. He was now a walking radiation source and could not return to normal life. At this point, the explosives planted by the men in black had started to sound their alarms. An explosion was imminent. Finally, under Rim's persuasion, Jin reluctantly began to move towards the outside of the building. On the way, they even bumped into the sniper who was almost forgotten. Jin's father watched as they left. Suddenly, he noticed Hyuk had managed to stand up again. Without hesitation, he threw a punch to trigger the explosives. The entire building collapsed in an instant, burying all the villains and the source of all evil under the rubble. Not long after, the authorities confirmed Hyuk was the mastermind behind the border conflict in 1997. Jin's father, who had been wrongly accused of defection, was finally vindicated. He was posthumously promoted to a first-class military rank. At last, Jin greeted his discharge and returned to his mother's side. His mother, seeing her son safe and sound, trembled as she tried to find words. In the end, Rim finally discovered her identity. She was the baby carried in the North Korean female officer's hands. Jin was now working at a wildlife rescue center. Judging by his focused gaze, it was clear he was quite content with his current life. With this, the drama came to an end. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.